It's Ports of Call Waterfront Dining, award-winning service and cuisine with a view of the dynamic L.A. Harbor from every seat. For reservations and directions, visit portsofcalldining.com or call 310-833-3553. And those are the my favorite ways of writing mm -hmm. when it just you're sort of like you're just the vehicle, the channel. It comes through you, you know. And I'm I'm like a by well, when I wrote Ride Captain Ride, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we were sitting there with three dog night, waiting in the lobby to record. We were running late in the main studio, their American studio, the Richie Podler. And Richie comes out to us and says, Do you have anything to record? And I said, Well, we're just jamming on something now. He says, No, no, no. The record company doesn't want any more blues from you guys. I said, that's funny, because we're the blues image. <laughs> and, and he said, no, right. they, they want something commercial. Mm -hmm. I said, man, don't even use that word around mm -hmm. us. You know, we're like real hippies, you know. Mm -hmm. Commercial? Oh, get out of here. Go buy a toupee. So the thing about it was, was that we were sitting there rocking, you know, with some really great blues type of uh, swings and shuffles. But then he says... Okay, if you don't have anything right now that sounds like a top 40 hit or that sounds like a pop rock song, then I'm going to have to ask you guys to leave because I got the Three Dog Night out there and everything they touch goes super platinum and gold. So I'm going to bring them in. If you don't have anything, if you've got something, I'll keep them out there on hold. He says, but let me tell you something. If you don't have something, I know for a fact the record company is going to let you go today. Oh. Today. And I said, Damn, what am I going to do? I, I had just learned how to meditate. So I said, look, I'll be right back. I went in the bathroom. I shut the door. And I'm sitting there, you know, mantras, whatever you want to call it, man. I'm just like really trying to go deep. And all of a sudden, I hear these words. Seventy-three men sailed up from the San Francisco Bay. I said, well, I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty good to me. So I just started writing it down. Mm -hmm. I was in there about 10 minutes alone. No drugs. Seriously, just a little meditation. Were the lights on or off? In the, the bathroom, bathroom, the lights were on. I thought it'd be a little weird if <laughs> somebody, you know, looked and said, the lights are off in there, but the door's locked. What's going on? And you're singing. In yeah, the I'm in there singing in there on the toilet. <laughs> so what I did is I took about 10, 15 minutes, and I came out. I came out, and I went to our keyboard player, Skip Conti. Great guy. And uh, I said, Skip. You got anything? We got to come up with something. I just got a few ideas. He says, yeah, listen to this. Ride, Captain, ride upon your mystery ship. He said, that's all I got. I said, that's all you got? I said, okay, then let me put my 73 men sailed up. And then the song just came together. What a great song, too. Oh, well, thank you. It's, it gets a lot of airplay still. Still, and it's in a lot of movies, mm -hmm. commercials. It does real well, mm -hmm. real well. And um, we, uh, within 30 minutes, we had something we could play for the producer. So he came in. He said, okay, you got something? Said, yeah, yeah, listen to this. But the first words that uh, 73 men sailed up mm -hmm. from the San Francisco Bay, I wondered why I had said 73, and now I realized. Because the Fender Rhodes piano, which was right there in the middle of the, of the room, said model number 73. I'm sure you've seen those. Mm -hmm. I had one. Yeah. And that's because they had 73 keys, uh -huh. yeah. right? Yeah. And it, But it had it in chrome, right, written across the front of the uh -huh. keyboard, big chrome, 70, model number 73. And I just thought, 73, I just like the phonetics of it, the beat of the words. So we started it like that, 73 men still. Long story short, the song, the record company comes in and goes, we love it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, record it, finish it, we're going to put it out. They put it on within a few months. It was at the top of the charts. I think it was number three already. Yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, yeah. it was number yeah. three in in uh, in the bigger markets like Billboard mm -hmm. and all that and Cashbox. But in regional, you know, big big markets, it, it was number one. And it happened to be that that's when Iron Butterfly asked me to join the band because they were letting go of their guitar player, wow. and. By that time, unfortunately, we were experiencing what a lot of bands experience today, and that is you go out on tour and do one-nighters, and you're driving like 500 miles a night after the show 
just in time to get to the next town and set up, have a sound check, mm -hmm. and then go on. We were working way too hard. And then when we would get home, the, the record company said, okay, into the studio, start the next album. And the guys that were married, it was three, they were in sad shape. They said, man, I don't even have the time to spend with my kids, with my family. This isn't the music business I envisioned. And I told the managers, I said, why don't you give the guys a break? Let them go fishing with their kids mm -hmm. or whatever. But no. In fact, one manager actually told me to my face. He said, you know why? You know why we keep pushing so hard? Because the normal life expectancy of a rock group is two years. Ooh. So we're going to milk you guys for everything that we can. Then we'll throw you out and you can go back where we found you. I said, well, what do you mean? You, you got the wrong group. Where yeah. you found us yeah. was headlining on Sunset Boulevard with Jimi Hendrix jamming with us. <laughs> if you want to throw us back there, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, and I, I hate to see it with all these great groups today, like Coldplay or whatever, you know, they get to a certain point where they're peaking mm -hmm. in popularity, and all of a sudden you hear they're splitting up. And it's that's all it is, man. They just don't have enough time with their families. They're being uh, bossed around by the record companies and the powers that be. So uh, we, you know, basically uh, uh, had Ride Captain Ride out, <coughs> And it, it was in number one in a lot of the major markets, but number three on Billboard. And this is where the fun starts, Robert. I get a call from the Pentagon. Actually, my managers did. True story, verified by people that were there on this secret spy ship called the USS Pueblo. I never heard of it. I didn't know anything about it. And the song is out, and the Pentagon says to my manager, how did this guy Panera know about the, the secret spy ship, the Pueblo, <laughs> while it was happening? Yeah. It, it, the public didn't know. It was, you know, being suppressed. Uh -huh. And even my manager was pretty much in the know. says, tell me about it. And he says, yeah, a, a ship sailed out from San Francisco, from the San Francisco Bay. I think it had 73 men on it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And went out to sea, mm -hmm. encountered a big storm, and then somehow drifted to the kind of like the international waters, mm -hmm. you know, to the border. And the Korean destroyer came and kidnapped it and took it back to Korea. And that was the, the whole story of the USS Pueblo, which was a big thing. The ship is still there in Korea in a museum somewhere. And meanwhile, I'm singing 73 minutes of San Francisco Bay, <laughs> you know, go rolling off to history and all that. <laughs> And these guys are positive, uh -huh. positive that my lyrics are intentionally about the Pueblo. Wow. And so, <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, I talked to the guy and I said, I said, I see now why our country is in so much trouble. And he says, why is that? I said, because you guys apparently don't think things through. For this song to be number one right now, while on the same week that your incident is happening, means we had to have had recorded it several mm -hmm. months ago right so are you saying that i knew it was going to happen before right. it happened yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying and the guy just didn't know what the hell to say i said that's what's wrong here yeah. man you know yeah. you're talking about yeah. an incident happening now that i wrote about three months ago i assure you sir it's just a coincidence yeah. i didn't have anything to do with north korea coming and kidnapping oh. our ship oh. but i'll tell you some funny stuff throughout the years as i tour and you know i do a lot of touring mm -hmm. I run into some of the crew of the Pueblo. They show up. They actually show up. And one guy comes up and says, hey, man, thanks for writing that song for us. I mean, I'm from the Pueblo. And I, I said, you're welcome, bro. But, you know, yeah. truthfully, I wrote it for everybody. Yeah. It's just a coincidence. That uh -huh. the, I said, no, no you, you could tell that to somebody else, but I know there's no coincidence. Uh, that's pretty 73 heavy. men. And San Francisco. Uh -huh. This would go on for years, but only recently did I find out something that sent chills up my spine. This guy comes up to me and says, I'm probably one of the only people that know why you said in that verse in uh, Ride Captain Ride, you said, um, and as the storm was blowing out on the deep blue sea, 73 men sailing off to history. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that verse says, uh, but no one heard them calling. No one came at all because they were too busy watching. The raindrops fall. Now, Robert, when I wrote that, it was 1,000% metaphor. Right. 
like raindrops keep falling mm-hmm. on my head. It's not real raindrops, right? Yeah. It's it's challenges, yeah. you know, yeah. life. And so that's what I meant too. So I was picturing as I was writing the mm-hmm. song, I was picturing this ship, kind of like an old Spanish galleon or something like that, going from coast to coast, San Pedro, Long Beach, uh, you know, Redondo, you know, all the places, and saying, hey, anybody out there want to come with us? We're, we're going to go start something new, man. We're going to be a hippie commune or something, mm-hmm. some island that we found. That part was, you know, just a little, little vague, but it was anybody want to come, and some people would come. But others wouldn't come because they couldn't hear them calling. They were too busy mm-hmm. in their own, you know, pity party, mm-hmm. so to speak. That's what I really meant to say. So this guy tells me, he says, I'm probably one of the only people that know why you <laughs> said no one heard them calling mm. and no one came at all. <laughs> I said, no kidding. Tell me then. Yeah. Because I never knew why I wrote that into the verse. <laughs> and he says, oh, it's very simple. I was the ship's radio operator. Me alone. I was in charge of all communications from the USS Pueblo. I was the radio guy. And this gigantic storm started. And the storm um, diluted the radio message. He couldn't get it out. It kept breaking up with static. You know, something about if it's raining too hard, I guess, if it's thundering or whatever Mm -hmm. out at sea, Mm -hmm. it affects your, your communications. So he said, I'm going, Mayday, Mayday, Korean destroyer coming, coming after us, coming right to us, 50 yards, 25 yards. Mm-hmm. They look like they're going to board. And he said, no one heard them calling. No one came at all because they were too busy watching the raindrops fall from the storm. Mm. And wow. He, and I said, thanks for telling me. I never knew that. <laughs> so such is life, you know, in the music business. Yeah. But you didn't tell him you were in the bathroom, right? <laughs> no, no, I didn't get into that whole thing with him. Maybe that that was a connection. Yeah. yeah. Through the bathroom, the energy was coming through somewhere in there. Yeah. Because every, you know, everything has vibrations, so you must yeah. have tapped in. Well, you know, the solitude, I think, mm-hmm. uh, what I had learned from meditation was that when, you know, you close your eyes and you shut off the outward flow and mm-hmm. reverse it and turn it inward... Sometimes things come to you mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, are pretty deep, pretty heavy. So I think it was a combination of I had just learned how to meditate and I knew a few mantras. And uh, and I was alone in there with, a, the, you know, my pencil and paper. Mm-hmm. And when I came out, man, it just it fit right into Skip Conti's chorus mm-hmm. in my verses. And, uh, man, when uh, when the producer heard it, he said, now that's that's what I'm talking about. The, the record company is going to love that. They did. It was a hit. And to this day, I still run into people from the Pueblo that say, And the Thanks, Pentagon man. loved it too, right? <laughs> oh, you can imagine that guy. Yeah, they're like, whoa, wait a minute. I said, yeah. see, this was wrong with our country. Yeah. You're asking me why my lyrics are like the, the Pueblo, and I wrote the lyrics three months earlier. And it's Italian and Cuban. Wait That's a minute. That's right, man. Don't you understand? This is an offer you can't understand here. 